we we are the founders of the Triforium Project. We are the Triforium Project. I love that. So th there's another. Yeah, there's a fourth. There's a fourth. This is Claire. Hi. That's Tom Carroll. I'm Jonna Bechtold. Okay. So this is one of those things. It's an L.A. landmark that nobody knew was here. Yeah, there's a lot of those in this town. Yeah. Things that you drive by a thousand times and you never register that they exist, let alone how it might be interesting. Tom turned us on to the Triforium first. Do you want to start off? Sure. Uh, so back in the year 2014, I made a short documentary about the Triforium. Uh, I found out about it probably back in 2005, an uh, art class that I was taking at a local college, Occidental College. We took a field trip down here, and I ended up doing an art project based around it, and so it always kind of stayed with me. And so by the jump forward 10 years later, making these short little documentaries about Los Angeles, I'm like, well, i got to do one about the Triforium. Like, it's such a weird thing, and it's sad, and it's falling apart. And then that's actually how we met, because you guys watched that, and then you reached out. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. I, fun fact, Claire and I went to college together, but she doesn't remember meeting me. We were in the same year. <laughs> she was two years older than me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we lived in Silver Lake and would take Temple down to go to Little Tokyo all the time. Hundreds of, time we've, hundreds of times we've driven by this and just never seen it until we saw his documentary. And then we saw it, and we, Claire and I are huge fans of underdogs, any kind of thing, and specifically Los Angeles, that isn't getting its fair shake. We, we try to pump up, we try to champion. So that's, what, that's how the project really started. Basically, we, we, we took an interest in it, and we realized that nobody else had any more authority other than the city of course to care about it like we thought maybe if we took an interest we would find like the proper authorities to sort of link up with but then it kind of turned out that it was really just us that cared about it like there wasn't a huge triforium following this the daughters of the artist have well people like are interested in it but there wasn't anybody that was willing to take charge don't you think yeah i mean people had tried to take charge back in well in 2006 councilwoman then councilwoman jan perry put six thousand dollars into the triforium working with a local artist named Catherine brem and they replaced all the incandescent bulbs and like, kind of cleaned it up. But it's incandescent bulbs, so fast forward 10 years, most of them have burned out at this point. I mean, it's a pariah. It went $700,000 over budget when it was built in 1975. No one wanted to touch it. Some people wanted to blow it up. <laughs> yeah, it's just sad. It's like sad. Okay, wait. Now, so let's back up a second. Okay. Explain to me what the Triforium is. Well, the major thing that people don't know about the Triforium is that it's a musical instrument. Uh, it looks like a static sculpture, which of course it is up here, but when it was originally designed, every single one of those glass cubes contains a light bulb. Every single one of those light bulbs is networked to a musical instrument and a computer system directly underneath us in the Triforium control room, which in 1975 was played like an organ by a, the Triforium, you know, uh, instrument sort of control guy and organist. organist. And it would actually, the music would, the amplitude of the music would react with the lights, causing a dancing of lights and music in, in synchrony. The artist called it a polyphenoptic musical instrument. It wasn't just amplitude, too. It was also frequency. So there was a little bit of, like, 1970s wacko color theory involved. <laughs> so, like, an A sharp relates to a red prism. 